Hello and welcome to the world of building design. This is uh, Revit MEP tutorial number six. In this tutorial, I would like to show you how to add some accessories and some fitting to your Revit MEP model. So in order to do that, you're going to go to the ceiling level one. So by going to the left side project browser, clicking on the level one ceiling, we have developed our dock work supply and return to this level now and now I would like to select some accessories to add to my model that we developed so far. Um, so in order to do that we go up to the system tab and we find the dock accessory command here. By left clicking on that I'm coming to the directory for the docked accessories. I open this directory. It looks like we don't have too many options, but for the purpose of this training, I would like to add some fire dampers. So we're going to go ahead and select the rectangular fire dampers from this uh, directory in here. So I'm going to select a standard. We don't need to change any of the property of the fire damper or any accessory. The good, the good thing about the Revit is that it is automatically done uh, by recognizing the dock size. So I'm going to give it a test here. So let's come to our dock fork and select some location. For example, this dock fork was a, um, you know, was a rectangular dock fork. So I'm going to come to this location. I pick the center line uh, with my fire damper, left click. I position my fire damper here. Uh, pay attention to some symbols that are associated with this uh, fire damper. We have this round for circling the fire damper and for this, uh, this arrows that shows the orientation that you can, you can change. Okay. And now, since I'm in the command of the fire damper, I don't need to escape from here because I want to put more fire damper on this model. So I'm going to come back and select some other location, say here. You see, automatically the fire damper or accessory that I have selected recognizes the orientation of the dock work, whether it's vertical or rectangular. And also when you pick the center line, it adjusts the size of your fire damper automatically based on that. So I'm coming to this location. I'm going to put the fire damper there. I'm coming here. I put maybe one in here. And then I come to um, two in here. I put one behind here. See, as soon as I clicked, the size is adjusted to the dock size. And then I'm going to cop select a couple more. Um, I'm going to come and do one more in here behind this wall. And let's see if I can put more. I'm going to put one more in here. Let's see if there's anything else we can put, any other fire damper we can position. Normally these fire dampers are put uh, between the walls in the dock work. So I think we should be good for now. Or maybe I put another one in here. Okay, now I escape a couple of times. If I go to level one floor plan on the left side double click we see the symbol of the fire damper are shown as it shows on the drawing as a fire damper but when we are on the ceiling plan level one it shows a realistic uh, symbol of a fire damper now i want to also select some other kind of dampers maybe some balancing dampers for my dock branches and and install it in the in some of the location in here. So I go back to 
docked accessories and if you come in this directory I do have my balancing damper here but I want to show you how to bring more of the accessories into your directory temporary directory in here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go while you're on the docked accessory you go to load family here and then let's see where we came from so when you're in the library Canada in here there's a doc work there's a doc uh, directory under the doc you can go to accessories or you can go to fittings I use the accessory for the purpose of this training I go to accessory I go to dampers and because I want to add some round balancing dampers I go to to select this balancing damper round and then open so while you select that that specific accessory comes and added to, to this list of directories so I'm going to go ahead and select the standard balancing damper round the same the same method applies for for this round uh, or any kind of balancing damper it automatically adjusts itself with the size of your round duct and also the orientation of your duct whether it's horizontal or vertical so in here if I hover you see now the the, the default size of this uh, round damper is larger than the duct we, we have drawn here but while we select and install it in here it, it automatically adjusts its size so I'm coming to the middle line somewhere here left click you see it adjusts its size and now I can also um, I'm gonna go left click because I want to show you how to recycle how to cycle this so by left clicking on the this specific um, you know, damper I can change the orientation or I can change the uh, you know arrangement of this damper I'm gonna go cycle press on this circle little circle and also on this one it changed the arrangement this this will become handy when you do the realistic design and you want to demonstrate your damper in certain position so I'm going to put this back for visibility in here so what I'm going to do I'm going to go there are multiple ways of selecting this as we learned in the previous tutorial you can either come to your dock accessories go to this directory pick this from here or you can simply left click on this same um, balancing damper and then right click create similar right and now I'm going to put it somewhere in here basically we are going to add it to most of our round um, branch dock works I'm just picking the center line of this branch dock works and I add my round balancing dampers to them so I'm gonna go ahead and select and install all of this round balancing damper across my across my uh, air terminal dock distributions Okay, let's see anything else is left here um, we pretty much let's see what happens if I select this you see even for this angular dock work when you hover on the center line and you select it the accessory is automatically adjusted in the same alignment of your dock work so that's a good thing about Revit that is very different than uh, other softwares in that in that manner uh, anything else we have left okay that's good we have added all of our balancing and fire dampers to this model what else I want to do I want to cap end of all of my open-ended dock work because uh, we need that to be done for dock pressure testing and our dock selection and sizing um, so I'm going to hover on any of the dock main distribution dock that have an open-ended branch uh, I'm going to hover here left click 
and then this command comes up on the top here. I'm going to select the cap open end and this is automatically closed as you can see this duct is closed. So doing the same thing with the other ones, this one was already capped, I showed you in the previous tutorial. This one I highlight, cap end, come down here. You see all of this little um, errors, if I hover and stay on that, it says this element has an open connector. It means that you have encountered uh, with an error in Revit, you can, you can get the list of all those errors. I will show you that in a different tutorials. But um, these are all uh, errors that shows that your model is not completed to its best practice. And um, part of that is you need to inspect your model to see what are the shortcomings in your model and you have to correct them. And uh, for the purpose of this specific uh, error, this is mainly because you have an open connector that is, that is basically you need to cap end. So left click on this dock and go to cap end. And once we do that, you see we have no error anymore. Doing in here, same thing, left click, cap end. And I think pretty much it. Um, yeah. One other thing I want to show you as part of the fitting uh, change and how to how to change your fitting for dock connection to your main branches. I'm going to draw a little duct in here. So I'm going to grab one of my um, you know round branch dock fork. I left click and I right click to do create similar. Once I clear, create similar, I basically grab the property of that dock fork with its size, its shape, uh, its system as well, whether it's a supply or return. So I'm coming in here, I left click, I drag this all the way to here, left click to stop, and I have this new branch, or sorry, the uh, this new accessories, which is this feeding, which are different than the other feeding. I want to show you how to change this. So by left clicking on this, by left clicking on your dock work, you have to come to here. It says your edit type of your dock work. By pressing on the edit type, your feeding routing preference is where you have to work on. So you press on edit here. Preference junction type is tap. You leave it as it is. So in here, normally what we have here is the standard type that I changed it to a standard type now for you to see how it's changed. So if I select that and I apply, okay. Now, if I delete this, Connection, dock fork, I'm going to go delete. And now if I left click and grab this and connect to this dock fork, you see I have a regular a standard connection. So I'm going to go back and change this. So just note that you don't change the fitting itself. You change the dock fork that needs to connect to the main dock fork. So the property of this dock fork and its connection property needs to be changed. So we highlight the dock fork in here, go to edit type, go back to routing preference, fitting, and then in here, in the junction, I'm going to change this to round takeoff shoe standard. Okay, apply, and okay. It doesn't affect this already drawn dock work already, but if you delete this, if you delete this and now grab this dock work, connect it now here, you see that new feeding type is applied after we change the setting of the junction, junction routing connection. This is, I, I just did this for the purpose of showing how to change your feeding type. I'm going to delete this because we didn't, don't need this dock work in this model. And 
and save this model. And this was the end of this tutorial. I, I wanted to show you how to add the accessories and change some of your feeding type and setting in the Revit. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and, and uh, ring the bell next to the subscribe command. Uh, and I will see you in the next tutorial.